Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach. This time we're looking at Required Practical 4 which is based on the effect of a named variable on the permeability of cell surface membranes. I had a request from a student to cover this practical so I thought I'd upload this. You will soon be able to find the theory for the cell membrane topic on my channel too. Before I start though I'd like to say that this practical comes up in Unit 5 for BTEC Applied Science and there is a potential investigation on this particular topic for Unit 6 for the Applied Science course also so this is not just isolated to the AQA A-level biology. I'm basing this video on the experiment I conduct with my students which is usually looking at the effect of alcohol concentration on the leakage of pigment from beetroot cells. We look at beetroot because it contains high concentrations of a pigment called betalin. Betalin is found inside of the vacuoles of the cells of the beetroot and the pigment only moves across damaged plasma membranes. So when we're doing this experiment we really are trying to take into account the level of damage on the cell membranes. The more the damage, the more pigment we would expect to see. There are two parts to this practical. The first part involves preparing a set of standards to produce a calibration curve. The standards are then used to compare the colour of the solutions obtained when the beetroot discs have been soaked in different concentrations of alcohol. For this experiment, our independent variable is a concentration of alcohol and we will be keeping temperature constant with the use of a water bath. We'll talk about this more in a second. First, let's look at how we make the colour standards. Your teacher or technician will have given you a beaker with beetroot extract. Essentially, this is pure beetroot juice in a beaker. We will use this extract and water to prepare a series of six boiling tubes containing five centimetres cubed of different concentrations of extract. And each tube will be labelled with zero, two, four, six, eight and ten. To make these concentrations, you would have a table in your notes that might look a bit like this. You can see on the left hand side, you've got the label on the tube going from 0 to 10. And the next two columns, which specify the volume of beetroot extract in centimetres cubed and the volume of water in centimetres cubed. Finally, on the right hand side, you have the concentration of the extract. So to make a 0% concentration of beetroot, we would simply need to add 5 centimetres cubed of water to the tube and no beetroot extract. And this would be made in the tube labelled 0. We continue to make the following tubes for 40%, 60%, and 80%. And then lastly, we've got 100% comprised of 5 centimetres cubed of beetroot extract only and no water at all. By the time you've made these colour standards, you should have a test tube rack that looks a little bit like this with a colour gradient, 10 being the darkest and 2 being the weakest. The next part of the method involves setting up a water bath. We are controlling the temperature at 30 degrees as this is a sensible temperature to work with. To set up a water bath, you will need a large beaker and a hot plate. You will have a second set of boiling tubes and in one of them you will add 2 cm cubed of 100% alcohol. You need to put a bung in it so that the alcohol does not evaporate off. This tube will be labelled as 100% and you will put this to one side. You need to prepare 4 more boiling tubes but each with a concentration ranging from 20% to 80% and each of them labelled with the respective concentration of alcohol that's inside of them. You could also prepare a distilled water boiling tube as a control if you wish to. All of these tubes with the alcohol need to go into a water bath to reach a temperature of 30 degrees. When the temperature has reached 30, you need to block 12 discs of beetroot. If you are lucky enough to have a fabulous technician or a really kind teacher, they might have already prepped these discs for you. But if you need to make them yourself, they can be made by using the cork borer size 4 and then sliced down to size. We block the outside of these to remove any excess water on the outside, but also to blot away any pigment that might be on the outside of the disc. So this is the water bath that's been set up. And using forceps, you are going to transfer two discs into each of the boiling tubes and replace the bung. These will be left in the water bath for five minutes. And every time a minute passes, you are required to shake the tubes gently to mix up the solution. Once the five minutes is up, we remove these tubes from the water bath. 
You will need to pour each solution into separate clean boiling tubes that have been labelled properly with the concentration of alcohol so you don't get them all mixed up, and you can throw the discs of beetroot away at this stage. We would visually compare each of the solutions with the colour standards you made earlier. Note which standard has the same colour, and if you think the standard falls between two values, you could use the intermediate number. For example, if the colour value is between 2 and 4, record the colour value at 3. The results can be recorded on a table that looks a little bit like this. You can see that it needn't be anything complex, you only need to have the concentration of alcohol on the left hand side and the comparison of colour reference on the right hand side. When comparing you simply hold the boiling tube side by side and visually compare. In this example the colour standard tube 2 looks very similar to the 20% alcohol concentration so in the table I would write down 2 in the second column. In this example here for the 40% alcohol tube that looks between the standard tube of 2 and 4 as it has got some dark patches but also some lighter parts so instead I would put down at the intermediate value of 3. In this example the 60% alcohol tube looks very similar to the standard tube labelled 6 so I can put 6 on the table. The one for 80% looks a bit like it's between 6 and 8, so I'll log that as a 7 on my table. And lastly, the 100% alcohol looks the same or similar to the tube that's labelled 10, so I will write down 10 on the table. Finally, in your lab books, you will be asked to analyse your results. The first thing I would say that you need to do is look at what the overall trend is. Essentially, this is the describe part of the analysis where you are saying what you see. Next, you should be able to talk about what the trend means. So this is the explain command word. For this part of the analysis, you need to say why does the result occur as it has done? You would have the darkest pigment color at higher concentrations of alcohol. So why does that happen? You should, in this section, make reference to the fluid mosaic model of the membrane and how the alcohol will disrupt or damage the lipid bilayer, therefore allowing the pigment to leave the cell and colour the alcohol. And essentially, the higher the concentration of alcohol, the more damage we are causing to the cell membrane. So something along those lines would make a suitable analysis. This method that I've just shown you is a qualitative measure as we are just using colour samples and subjectively comparing reference colours. In order to make it a quantitative test, you could use a colorimeter to measure the absorbance and compare that to the coloured standards absorbance and then plot a graph. So I hope that's been really useful for you everyone. I have added a whole heap of past paper questions based around this practical on my TES shop. Don't forget these resources are free for you to download, so check it out by clicking the link in the description below this video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.